last we few are, questions. We are number nine? Yeah. Okay. How long do you give lifestyle interventions to work? Uh, for example, obesity-related diseases before deciding medical or surgical intervention will likely be needed. Uh, how or when should non-medically trained fitness professionals discuss weight loss medications with their clients? Oh, this is good. This is a good one. Yeah. You included yoga and this one? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, so I think this is really important. So I'll start with the second question, like how or when should non-medically trained fitness professionals discuss weight loss medications with their clients? I think this sh we need to destigmatize this, we need to normalize this stuff ASAP, immediately, now. Uh, so if you're discussing weight loss with somebody and they want you to somehow help them in this process, I think giving them sort of a setting the expectation early on where it's like, hey, we have a lot of different options in order to tackle this appetite dysregulation sort of issue. So, and that includes lifestyle changes with relation to the diet, physical activity, sleep, food environment, eating environment, it's great. We also, there are also medications potentially available and there are also surgery available. And it just really depends what you need in order to fix that issue. And those issues are not necessarily your fault, all right? But as far as dealing with them, if you're, you know, trying to make some headway there, there they are available options to you. So I think starting that from the jump, normalizing it, that would all, all be useful. Um, as far as the first question, when do we, uh, sort of, uh, it's not necessarily give up on lifestyle, but start adding on to that, intensifying the intervention or increasing uh, the level of care. When is it appropriate to recommend people to uh, see a doctor about the current FDA approved medications for weight loss or for surgery? Those, are, those guidelines are published. So it's if somebody's got a BMI of greater than 27 um, and one um, uh, adiposity-based chronic disease, that person is recommended to be evaluated for weight loss medications if they're not doing well or good enough with the lifestyle stuff. And then BMI of 35 plus one or more adiposity-based chronic diseases, those people should have had a consultation with the surgeon. And again, people at, on YouTube are gonna roast us for this. They'll be like, just giving up. Just, you know, pushing the easy button. And it's like, <laughs> none of the, none, nothing about this is easy. N nothing about this whole change, and especially treating this from a public health standpoint is easy. If it were, we would not have this current epidemic, all right? And the most important thing isn't about how hard or how virtuous or how, you know. Or whether people pull themselves up by their bootstraps to get there. The more important <laughs> thing is that we fix it. Correct. <laughs> from a public health standpoint, uh, that's the most important thing. And so we gotta, we gotta do that. Yeah, only thing I would add is to the first question where it was specifically asking, how long do you give lifestyle interventions to work regarding an obesity-related chronic disease? So meaning that they have not only obesity, they have the excess body fat, but they have a health-related oh, complication sure. from it. And so in that standpoint, in, in that situation, as you mentioned, based on those criteria, I'm offering this kind of treatment right, right away, off yep. right off the bat. I don't see a reason to delay. Um, and to be clear, as I mentioned in my lecture, I get paid precisely zero dollars extra for prescribing any of, these <laughs> any of these treatments. It makes no impact on anything from my standpoint. I have no issue uh, uh, treating these things when somebody has an obesity-related chronic disease, meaning a complication of diabetes, if, uh, of, of obesity, excuse me. If somebody has excess body fat and they have no apparent health complications from it, then sure, it is not a crazy idea to let somebody try this kind of like lifestyle alone approach, particularly if that's what they want to do. Because yep. a lot of people, again, come in with this like culturally baked in stigma against, I don't want medications because that's a, that's a crutch. I'm like, okay, I know where this is coming from. I've had this conversation before. We can keep working on this because these may become necessary at some point. But if you want to try the lifestyle approach up front in the setting of excess body fat without health related complications, I'm cool with that. But once we have the excess body fat with health-related complications, I'm treating that much more aggressively or recommending treatment much more aggressively up front to get it under control. Because hey, the earlier, just like with the blood cholesterol discussion, the earlier in life I can get this stuff under control, this benefit magnifies over the lifespan in terms of potential risk downstream. How much uh, you get paid by Big Pharma? Zero dollars, uh -huh. you believe yeah. it. Yeah, that's like what somebody's getting cash in big checks would say <laughs> for sure. Okay.